Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 4, Summary and Analysis At King Duncan's castle in Forest, Duncan meets with the other thanes, and is told by his oldest son, Malcolm, that the former thane of Cawdor, who betrayed the king, has been executed. Duncan laments that he was a gentleman in whom I built an absolute trust. Macbeth then enters with Banquo, and the king praises both men as heroes. Duncan then announces that, in the event of his death, the crown will pass to Malcolm, and names him Prince of Cumberland. The king then states that they will all travel to Inverness Castle, Macbeth's home, to celebrate together. Macbeth says he will travel ahead to bring the joyful news to his wife. Before they exit, Macbeth utters an aside, where he ominously comments that the Prince of Cumberland is in his way if he wants to become king. He then looks up to the heavens and urges, Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. Analysis. This scene is key in establishing the theme of kingship within the play. When Shakespeare wrote Macbeth, England and Scotland had recently been united under the rule of Scottish King James I, following the previous Queen, Elizabeth I's death, without an heir. Eager to show fealty to the new monarch, Shakespeare renamed his acting troupe the King's Men, and in the play Macbeth, sets about courting James's favour through setting the play in Scotland, but also in its message about true kingship. Consider the presentation of Duncan in this scene. He is benevolent and kind, rewarding both Macbeth and Banquo for their bravery in defence of the kingdom. Shakespeare uses imagery of nature in much of Duncan's language. But signs of nobleness like stars shall shine on all deservers. I have begun to plant thee, and will labour to make thee full of growing. This is a deliberate choice to promote Duncan as a godly king, since according to the great chain of being, kings were appointed by God and ruled over creation. Therefore, the positive and wholesome imagery presents Duncan as God's chosen king. In contrast, Macbeth's words spoken in his aside bring to mind the lies and deception which were an aspect of the politics of the time. In 1605, before Macbeth was written, Catholic plotters had attempted to assassinate James I and blow up the Houses of Parliament in a sign of clear disapproval of the new king's religion and priorities. Macbeth's hushed private words therefore present him as a plotter in a parallel of the two-faced nature of many within the society of Jacobean England. Key Quote Analysis Consider how Shakespeare juxtaposes two sides of Macbeth's personality in the scene. In public, his words echo a sense of loyalty and honour. Your Highness part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state. Here the repetition of duties emphasises Macbeth's eagerness to present himself as a servant of the crown, showing, at least outwardly, he understands his role to serve God's chosen king. Yet Shakespeare quickly punctures our confidence in Macbeth, since as soon as Duncan pledges the throne to Malcolm, Macbeth speaks in a dramatic aside, seemingly plotting his own ascent to the throne. The Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down or else o'er leap, for in my way it lies. Stars. Hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. The eye wink at the hand, yet let that be which the eye fears, when it is done to see. Firstly, he presents Malcolm as a metaphorical step, which is in his way, with the stairway acting as a visual metaphor for Macbeth's ambition to rise up the ranks of power. Shakespeare tempers this sense of ambition, however, as in the next breath, Macbeth chastises himself, calling on the stars to hide your fires. Here the stars are symbolic of the divine, and in directing his attention to God, Macbeth shows awareness that his treasonous thoughts are displeasing to God, presenting him as conflicted as well as ambitious.